Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's a lot of pressure uh, delivering remarks to commemorate the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King on this day named in his honor. A lot of nerves as well. Um, as, as you know, this is my first time delivering any address in this chamber live. Um, I work, live, and represent Centralia, Washington, a city founded in 1875 by our George Washington, an African-American who was born in the time of slavery and traveled to Washington State with his family. To look, and he was looking for, as he puts it, a decent place in this world. And I'd like to think that he found something even more than just a decent place in this world, something very special to me. And that's why this day means so much, because there are so many holidays for one reason or another that we debate, should we have, should we not have, should we rename, should we replace? But there's one holiday I think we could all agree that garners no debate, a holiday that honors a man whose words and actions, they transcend race, religion, and gender, a man whose words and actions represented the best of what humankind could and should strive to become. I have two young school children, and I wonder, will they read these words someday? Will they watch this video someday? Because they spend a lot of time educating me about Reverend King and his words and his legacies and his actions. And I wonder what was going through Dr. King's mind when he thought about these historic speeches that he was delivering. What his impact would be, what his legacy would be. And did he think that a Washington state representative from Centralia representing the good 20th district would be talking about him and his words and actions in 2023? Because I guess nobody really knows their impact or their legacy. But I have to believe he felt his philosophy, philosophy and message was important or he wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have stood up for everything that was right. When I drop my children off at school, I, I always say, be good to each other and be good to others. Um, and while my children know that simple phrase that I repeat daily, it's a really poor attempt to share some of Dr. King's philosophy that people fear one another because they, they don't know one another. Uh, to, help, to know someone helps shed that fear, and, and shedding the fear opens up the possibility of, of love and understanding. Today, we personally and through the media have witnessed great tragedies, tragedies that have magnified a world of inequality. We've come far from the advent of the civil rights movement, but at the same time, there is so much more to accomplish before we reach a day of full equality a day where we're measured by the content of our character, that we're measured by our heart and our soul, but not the color of our skin. What I do know, and I, I love the statement by Dr. King that says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Love is a powerful emotion. It's a powerful word. And, and a word and a phrase, I love you, um, we just don't say it enough. And now I know HR probably wouldn't want us to say it more, but it's something that I think that we need to say more of and think about. I believe my responsibility as a legislator in Southwest Washington is to get to know you, Mr. Speaker, and to know what the people in Pierce County have in common with the people in Lewis County and find common goals common solutions, ways that we can represent our communities together. It's our job to bring the voices of marginalized communities, whether they're urban or rural, to this floor and under this dome to find those solutions because it's what's expected of us and it's what Dr. King wanted us to do. Dr. King said, people fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. 
Mr. Speaker, very good advice for all of us as we welcome our new members and members like me, a sophomore in his first in-person legislative session. And it wasn't just Dr. King's philosophy, but his actions that were so impactful. His actions, his leadership, and his example. He didn't blame, he didn't pick winners and losers. Society had tragically already done that for him. But what he did is he found commonality. He brought people together. Dr. King's life and legacy continue to guide us today, and it continues to guide my family. On this Martin Luther King Jr. Day in the state of Washington, we remember that he chose to know his enemy, disarm them with love, and find the commonality and humanity in all of us. I choose to believe that we have more in common than we have differences. I choose to believe that we all want to know one another better and find those solutions. After all, not only is it the right thing to do, but it's what we've been elected to do. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.